So the project started about two and a half years ago, and it started actually because there was a group of ministers, Christian Protestant ministers, going to create a group called Council for Middle East Peace, Delaware uh, area. And uh, the editor for the uh, news journal, a man named Gary Soulsman, who really was filled with soul, he was worried that maybe there'd be a misunderstanding or maybe the rabbis wouldn't understand or there was, there was a worry. So he knew me already and he said, well, Michael, you're friendly with all the other rabbis in the area, the different movements, Orthodox, Reform, Conservative, Reconstructionists. Could you gather them and these ministers together just to have a conversation to get to know one another? I, I love that. I love interfaith communication very much. It's very important to me in terms of creating peace and making a better world. So I, I said, sure. And, and Gary, as the editor for the religion page, went ahead and he co-hosted it. We had a lovely meeting. And one of the things I brought up at the meeting, because there had been talk about divestment, especially from the Presbyterian Church, to show the displeasure of this state of Israel and the way the policies were going. And I said, well, I think all of us share, I said, a frustration that the peace process isn't moving forward. I said, however, if you do divestment, it's going to be like closing the door on the Jewish community. We won't be able to participate um, because we feel that the blame will only be on Israel and we just can't do it. I said, I have a thought. So rather than divestment, what would it look like if we invested in peace? And we'll find a project that really speaks to us that would help maybe create an environment where peace would be possible. And, and these, these Christian ministers liked the idea, so thank God for that. And then the question, what was the project? And there was this lovely man named Harvey Price, and he'd already done some interesting work with steel drums. He's a music professor at the University of Delaware. And he'd worked at bringing steel band groups to Israel to work with Ethiopian Jews. Very, these are Jews that come from Africa, and they've had some problems integrating into Israel. Um, and they're, they're poor for the most part, and, and the issue is how to integrate them in. So this lovely Harvey Price created these Ethiopian um, bands with steel drums. And steel drums is great because it doesn't belong to any one culture. It's not Jewish, it's not Ethiopian, as you learn, it's not Arabic, it's, it's from the Caribbean. It's like we're, we're cruise boats. It's, although I learned later that it actually was a symbol of rebellion, which is kind of interesting. They used to do it with oil drums. So. Um, so he said he had tried to create a project like this with the State Department, and they weren't interested in the funding. But he already had it all outlined. He was just looking for somebody who was interested. And we were looking for a project. And we say in Yiddish, it was shared. It was meant to be. And so we created this wonderful match. Um, with the help of some of our ministry friends, um, they already had, uh, identified the Mar Elias School in Ibelin. It's a really nice match. It's a very dedicated interfaith learning it's in a beautiful Arab village of Ibelin in the Galilee. And originally we had hoped to actually do something between um, uh, the West Bank and, and, and Palestinians and Israelis, but the borders really, it's just, it's hard. It's, it's, it doesn't smooth forward. Please God, it will, inshallah. In the future, it doesn't right now. So we said, well, let's start with Arabs inside of Israel. And then we're looking for a Jewish partner. And um, our first try didn't work so well. The second try worked brilliantly, it, and it's called um, the Leo Beck Institute in Haifa. Haifa is a wonderful city. It's been dedicated to interfaith cooperation for a very long time, long before the state of Israel. Jews and Arabs, Christians, Muslims, Jews were getting along very well. And the Mar Elias School is also dedicated for Jews, Christians, and Muslims learning together. So we actually found a perfect match. And so we've been working it through. We first raised money for the uh, children in Ibelin, and they started making music for a year, and then we turned around and tried to raise an additional funds to buy the, the musical instruments for uh, Haifa and Ibelin, and now the children have been going back and forth. And what could be better? Children, music, and peace. So we're trying to build peace from the bottom up, not relying on the leaders of the Palestinians or the leaders of the Israelis. We're trying to do it people to people, and hopefully growing a culture of peace that will be sustainable. You would think, that the only successes to be measured is what's going on in the Galilee between, in Israel between Jews and Arabs. But I would say if you're being a little bit more subtle about it, at least 50% of the success is going right here in Delaware. Delaware never had a project like this before. The closest thing they had was the Ulster Project, which is brilliant, that deals with um, pr uh, Protestant and Catholic children um, in Ulster, in, in Northern Ireland, coming here to Delaware for a great experience year after year sustainable. Mm -hmm. So that's the closest thing we have, but nothing in the Middle East like this, not in Delaware. 
And so part of the success is just getting uh, Christians and Jews who maybe normally wouldn't speak to each other so regularly, meeting once a month to plan together, to dream together. As I said, what was missing was the Muslim voice and now little by little we have that voice. That's important too, just working together without, without any goals. You know? and, then, and then any goals we achieve in the Middle East and in Israel, it's, it's, I think it's frosting on the cake. So I wanted to let you know that you maybe you wouldn't see that. Mm. We're looking 8,000 miles, whatever, across the Atlantic and the Mediterranean. And I think the first success is that we're still together two and a half years later, even though our personalities are so very different, but our hopes for peace are very similar. That's the first thing. Um, I think that's the first success really was the kickoff event, which we did uh, about two and a half years ago. Yeah, two years ago. It was Cinco de Mayo, remember that, because I'm from California. California Cinco de Mayo is a big thing, 5th of May. And we did it at the Delaware Art Museum. What was really nice was, not only did we have community leaders involved, but we also had officials from um, the State of Israel, from the Deputy Consul General there as well, because he thought it's important as well, and it's important to invest time and energy into Jews and Arabs working better together. And I'm, I'm, I'm happy that he thought it was important enough to come out from Philadelphia and be supportive. But we raised, that was where we raised enough money to begin to buy the instruments for the children in Ibelin. So that was really successful. And the first time they played the music was so exciting. Uh, actually seeing the children, we got videos of this, because Harvey Price went to uh, Ibelin and actually helped them with the music and education. So it's one thing to buy these things and send them, but to actually see the children playing them is one thing. But I'll tell you what was very exciting. Uh, last summer, um, I led a, a group of um, three synagogues, Congregation Beth Shalom, the synagogue you're interviewing me in, where I serve as rabbi, as conservative, as well as the rabbi, the Orthodox rabbi, Rabbi Stephen Sachs, as well as the Reform rabbi, who's more liberal rabbi, Yair Robinson from Congregation Beth Emma. We all went together to Israel, and the highlight of the trip was going to Ibelin, where we actually saw the children playing the music, which was so exciting, interacting with us. We had lunch with them. We had a typical Israeli lunch, um, or really, it could be a typical Arab lunch, frankly. Pitot and Israeli salad, which could be Arab salad, um, hummus, and it was just beautiful. And they made sure it was kosher so we could eat it, which is very nice because that's not the tradition, but they wanted to accommodate us with typical, I think, um, Muslim hospitality. Or we'll say Arab because we're Christians there too. And then we went on our bus to Haifa, and they didn't have the instruments yet, but they knew they were coming. We went to the beautiful Leo Beck Institute. We were, we uh, were met by the director that tells us how important it is for the mission of their school. What the, we'll talk a little bit later about Leo Beck, I hope, and what his mission was as a human being. But the fact that the school, in order for it to really do what it's supposed to do, this Peace Drums project really speaks to who they are. Because we have to have people who are vested, have vested interests. So I think having a, such a large group of Delawareans to go to see where the children are, meet the children, meet their teachers, see the instruments, see the children play for us. It's very, very exciting. Um, the next piece of the adventure is that they have been making some music together, but we're planning from April 11th to April 22nd, 2016, to actually have the children, uh, Jews, Arabs, and uh, Mus uh, well, Arab Christians and Muslims, come together as a group from Israel, sometimes sponsored by their, their parents too, and actually come here to the greater Delaware Valley, and they're gonna make music for us, and more people will get to know the project as well. I'm so excited. They, they did do one project um, in the Philadelphia suburbs to raise the profile of the organization. So as more and more people hear about it, they get excited because they can't change what uh, Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu is going to do as much as we'd like. They can't change what uh, President Abbas is going to do in Palestine. Can't do that. We just don't have the power or the influence. But we can influence from the bottom up. And what's great is if you're on the left wing or if you're on the right wing, it doesn't matter what your politics are here, because children and music is like apple pie and mom. It's, it's good for everybody. I think anybody who really believes in the future of that region can really find themselves getting involved in it. And allows people to feel like they can actually do something to make a difference, which is very important when people are feeling frustrated and they need a way of, of expressing themselves and, and, and using the hard-earned money to try to make the world a better place. And I think this project, it won't change everything. But it, it's a beginning, and really, we're not supposed to finish the task 
we say in our Jewish faith, but neither are you supposed to go ahead and not begin the process. In at Judaism, we have this uh, idea called tikkun olam, it means repairing the world. It's this idea that um, God um, did not make the world perfect. I'm sure God could have, but God made the world imperfect so that human beings would have a purpose being on this world, on this earth. And our job is wherever we can to, uh, to we can't make the world perfect, but we can be involved in the perfecting of the world. And I think that for, for those in the audience who believe that peace is possible, that believe in the words salam and shalom, they don't know really what to do. This, this peace strength is so attractive because you, you can theorize all you want. You can have historical reasons why there isn't peace. You can say those Israelis or those Arabs. You can say whatever you want. But in the end, we're talking about human beings. And I think that sometimes when we get all political, we forget there's human beings involved. I love peace drums because it takes a music which is um, different. It's not Arabic, it's not Jewish, it's not Israeli, it's not Palestinian. It's, it's not owned by any of the people who are players in the region, so there's no politics here. It's not like their music. It, it comes with the Caribbean. It comes with the beautiful trade winds and breezes of the Caribbean, and palm trees and lovely music, and it takes it to this region. And these children are taking this music, making it their own, learning to play with each other. And as they make music together, hopefully they can make other things happen together as well. And please God, these will be the politicians who will be running these countries in the future. And those of you that decide to invest in peace drums will be investing in peace from the ground level. And you can say, please God, inshallah, that Vesrat Hashem, please God, that you are a part of it. And you can take ownership on that. And you can say, I did my part for Tikkun Olam. I did my part to repair the world and make it a better place, to be God's junior partners in the work of ongoing creation. Thank you.